Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my first ever video, so I would really appreciate any likes and please subscribe if you enjoy collectibles. Uh, my goal for this channel is to review um, various lines. Today, obviously, I have the first three waves of the Lord of the Rings Diamond Select figures with the Sauron Build-A-Figure. I'm excited to unbox them and let's get started. Alright, so I'll start off with Wave 1. Um, I will have all of these in time codes if you want to skip ahead. Uh, feel free to do so. So, I hesitated in getting this Wave just because of the negative reviews I heard for Legolas. So I'm going to go ahead and start with him. Sorry, there's quite a bit of glare. Uh, let's get this out of the box. So right off the bat here, I'm not, not loving this figure. Um, I don't hate it, but it does leave some something to be desired. Uh, I think that face sculpt, it's okay. It's not terrible. Let's see if I can get it to... Focus. Hmm. So, I mean, it is what it is. The face sculpt's all right. What I really am not a fan of is how stiff and just tight this is. And I think anyone who's purchased Diamond Select, they're familiar with this. I mean, the articulation, it's limited to say the least. He's got single jointed knees, single jointed elbows. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, there are butterfly joints, okay. They're kind of limited, but they're there, so. Um, you know, I think most of us who have heard much about the line have heard of the complaints with Legolas, so I won't get into it. He comes with three arrows, obviously his bow, and the two Build-A-Figure pieces for Sauron, which look to be the right leg and the right arm, which look awesome. I'm super excited to build him. So, um, yeah, Legolas, he's okay. Obviously, if you're building the Fellowship, you need him. He's essential, and for the Build-A-Figure piece. All right, so next up is Gimli. I've heard a lot of good things about him. There he is in box. A lot of glare, unfortunately. Um, but let me get him open. And right out of the box, I'm loving Gimli. Um, as you can see, he comes with Sauron's head, two extra hands for gripping his axes, as well as two open hands. Comes with three of his axes, which I believe are all that he has in the film. I may be wrong. Um, you've got the bearded axe, which I love the design. You've got his double bladed axe, which is incredible. One thing I will say, Diamond Select has a great assortment of accessories for Gimli. Legolas obviously was missing his knives, but we did find out recently that the golem with the rock that you can purchase comes with those knives as well as a few extra arrows. So if you're wanting those, get that golem. Um, Gimli himself looks really good. I mean, the likeness, I would say is quite good. Obviously, you know, for a $25, $30 price range figure, I would say that is a really good likeness. It's not going to be a Hot Toys, obviously, different scale, of course. But um, one thing I did notice 
with the original press release photos and videos all of the characters had their their green cloaks from Lothlorien and unfortunately the release none of them have it and if you look at Gimli you can see his ponytail his braided ponytail I gotta <laughs> include that um, there's quite a big gap and I believe it's because there was the green Lothlorien cloak there and then for some reason in production they took that out uh, which is unfortunate I love the the matching green cloaks it's iconic for the fellowship um, but it is what it is I might try to get a custom for that going all right wave two here uh, we'll start off with the Nazgul and Right off the bat, in the packaging, I mean, looks just like the cloaked riders, which um, that's what we need them to be. So let's get this open. Okay, so we've got the Nazgul out of the package. And as you can see, he comes with the waist slash hips, I don't know, um, part of Sauron. He comes with three blades. I believe this is the Witch King's blade. I could be wrong. This might just be the, the normal ring wraith blade that they all have. It looks great. Um, great recreation of the film, which has incredible blade designs. It also has the Morgul dagger as we all remember, gets stabbed into Frodo. And a little sheath there, and another blade. This might be the Witch King blade. I uh, should have researched that, but um, one of these is the Witch King's blade, and one is the regular Ring Wraith. So cool that they threw those three blades in. As far as the figure itself, <laughs> Uh, it might be hard to see, but there's actually not even a head. <laughs> it's just an empty hood, which, you know, with shading, lighting, you can't really tell. It is kind of weird, though. I feel like just a flat black surface may have been better. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, his gauntlets look really good, just like the film. The robes look great. I will say they're very thick material so i mean they look good when you stand it like this but there's not much articulation going on there um, he does have the excellent armored boots um, i believe they're called greaves i could be wrong um, you know he's got the the works there so he looks really good he is kind of weird to stand. The ropes kind of get in the way. Um, like, he'll stand, no problem, but you're not going to get many poses out of him. Uh, sorry, trying to figure this out here. Oh, he does have double-jointed knees, which is cool, but again, you're not getting much out of him as far as posing, so not sure how useful that is. But uh, he looks great. One thing that really sucks, if you bend his arm upward, his robes just, you know, clearly defy gravity. So that really is unfortunate because it affects posing. You can't really have him lift his arms up without looking kind of weird. Uh, I wish they would have made it less pronounced. I don't know. But overall, great Ring Wraith, Great Nazgul. Alright, here's Frodo in the box. There's the packaging, same on all six figures. Let's get him out of the box. Alright, so Mr. Underhill here comes with, obviously himself, he comes with Sting in the scabbard. And it's a little tight, I'm a little worried there. There we go. Pops out, it was a little... A little bit of a tight squeeze, but you can see it has the carving just like the film. Scabbard looks great. Uh, let's see how good I am at... Uh, there we go. 
Um, so we've got him with the sword. It also comes with the light of Galadriel. Can't remember the name of it. Let me know in the comments. Um, and then two build a figure pieces for Sauron. Oh, wow. I guess more than two. Uh, the torso with the pauldrons and the cape, which is actual cloth, which is always something that at least I myself as a collector enjoy. Um, it just looks so much more realistic. And I kind of wish the ring wraith had utilized at least some cloth. But anyways, there's those pieces. Um, as far as the figure itself, the likeness of Elijah Wood, I'd say it's decent. That's not bad. Um, you know, it's not, again, it's not going to be super expensive quality likeness, but for a $25, $30 figure, I'd say that's great. Um, again, it's really unfortunate he doesn't have the green Lothlorien cloak. It's just such a better look. This is just kind of brown. And, you know, it's his look from the Shire to Rivendell to through Moria, all the way to Lothlorien, obviously. So, you know, it has its place, but it would be really nice to have, once they get the full fellowship, all of them in those robes. But again, I'll stop complaining about that. <laughs> uh, the feet look great. They've got the hobbit fur. Again, he only has double-jointed knees, double-jointed elbows. For some reason, the ring wraith has double-jointed knees. Um, but the rest so far only have single joint. And so there is Frodo of the Nine Fingers. Ten fingers for the figure. This is before the end, but looking good. Um, I'd say solid. And one thing I will say, they have done a great job of scale with these figures. You look at him next to Gimli. That's great scaling. And Gimli next to Legolas looks great. I will say the Ring Wraith looks a little small, but, you know, that's fine. That's not a, as big of a deal to me as the Fellowship actually being in scale. All right, last wave for today. Last wave that's currently out. Aragorn, King Elisar, and a Moria Orc. Let's start with the Moria Orc. And let's unbox him. All right, so for the Moria Orc, this guy is awesome. I absolutely love this particular head sculpt with the giant eyes. It's not quite accurate to the Moria Orc that's so memorable in the film. That one has hair, but you know, it looks like an orc. It does the job. Um, it also comes with this other head sculpt, which you can change out with the helmet. It looks like it's the same orc underneath, just with the helmet. Um, personally, I prefer the helmetless look, but that is there. So if you want an army build or just have two different versions, you've got that. I will say the articulation is quite good for this guy. He's got double jointed elbows and knees. Uh, it looks like he's got a little bit of butterfly. It's the armor makes it hard to move. Um, but with those double jointed knees, you can get him into those kind of bow legged orc stances, which looks great. Um, this guy is awesome. Great to go up against the Fellowship or any of the heroes. He also comes with Sauron's mace, which is a little bent, but a little hot water or blow dryer. You could bend that back into place. He comes with a spear and a type of sword spear. Um, yeah, I really am loving this. This is definitely a favorite so far. Ooh, the ridged armor. He's got 
a lot of color going on. The reds, the browns, the dark grays. He just looks really good. So definitely pleased with this figure. I might have to pick up a second one just to have both of the looks. Another thing that's unfortunate, the production photos showed a third head sculpt, which looked awesome, but it's not here. So somewhere in production, Diamond decided to skimp there, which really is unfortunate. Um, seems to be a trend with this line, not loving it. But, you know, I think this line as a whole is solid and... I've never been able to find a line this good for Lord of the Rings, so really excited for where it will go. Okay, here he is himself, Strider, the Dúnedain from the north, King Elisar, Aragorn. Um, in the box even, he looks awesome. I'm really excited to open this guy. All right, so here he is out of the box, and he is awesome. This may be my favorite of the entire series so far. Um, his articulation is quite good. He's got double-jointed knees, double-jointed elbows, thigh swivels, and he's got the ab crunch. Well, I'm not sure if that's called an ab crunch. I believe it's a ball joint in the torso. He's got bicep swivels. Uh, there may be butterflies in... I think there are. They're quite tight for this particular figure. But overall, he looks great. I mean, the likeness... It's not 100%, of course. Again, I've talked this to death, but lower-end figure prices... For that standard, he looks great. He's even got Arwen's necklace. He gets the knife that Celeborn gives him in the film, which I believe is not mentioned in the book. I could be wrong. Don't remember. Don't remember that detail in the book. But it's an awesome dagger nonetheless. Comes with the sheath. And, uh... See me struggle to get that in. Comes with his ranger sword in the scabbard. And it looks great. And this is really cool. And I'm surprised that it came with this, but it comes with Anduril, Flame of the West, which is my favorite all time sword design. I actually own the United Cutlery replica which I love. Let me know if you'd like to see a review of that. But the sword itself looks awesome. It even has the runes etched into it. it has the gold inlays, the leather grip. Obviously it's not leather, but the scabbard looks great, just like the film. So that's a really cool little detail they threw in there, which I'm kind of surprised they did, but uh, with the production photos, he had a bow and arrow. Doesn't come with one in this. But personally, I prefer Anduril, so it's a good trade-off. He also comes with a torch. Perfect for fighting the Nazgul. And, whoops, um, Sauron's left leg and left arm. Sorry, let's get a better view of that. So... He is quite a stacked figure for the price. Um, looks awesome. One thing I did notice, I could be wrong, let me know, but I believe these are Boromir's van braces or whatever you call them, wrist guards. And again, he doesn't have the, the Lothlorien cloak, but he does have Boromir's guard, wrist guards, which he gets after Boromir dies. So... Kind of a little inconsistency that bothers me. I know it's not really a big deal, but it is what it is. Uh, he looks great. All right, so here we have all of our Sauron Build-A-Figure pieces. And even like this, he looks awesome. I'm super excited to see. So 
let's see how easy he is to put together. Let's see. Some of this I'm going to have to do off camera just because I don't want to break it. All right, so there's the torso and waist connected. Let's get that right foot, uh, leg and foot. That was actually easier than I thought. Let's do the right, or the left. <laughs> Already, you can tell this guy is big, which is excellent. That is what we want. Okay, let's try the arms. The one with the one ring. All right, and the left arm. And you'll notice they don't really pop in. They just kind of they get in there and then they're, they just kind of sit there. So one thing, there's a little piece back here that pops off for the cape. And so it's got little holes in there. You'll line it up. And then just pop it back in there. Oh, easier said than done. And it kind of just clicks in on each of the three pegs. So that's how it should look. And we're getting there. Got the cloak. Let's get the head before we do the pauldrons. It is tricky because he's got the spindly part on his helmet. Let's see. You don't want to damage those, but it is tricky to get in. All right, so I just pegged his head in off camera to get a better angle on it. Um, it is tricky, watch out, try not to bend these. Uh, but if you just kind of twist, it should get on there. Uh, finally, let's add the pauldrons. And get them off. Okay, wrong side. And wow. He looks amazing. I mean, he is a huge figure. I believe it said 10 inches. He does only have double jointed, or excuse me, single jointed knees and elbows. There's no butterfly, there's no bicep swivel. He's got ball joints for his wrists and the feet uh, look like ball joints as well with ankle pivots, so that's good. Um, he doesn't have toe articulation, which would have been nice, but it's fine. As far as the look, he looks fantastic. He looks just like the film. He's definitely imposing. All right, here he is in all his glory, the Dark Lord Sauron. Behind, we've got the six figures which i'll bring out to the front if you love lord of the rings and or collectibles i would highly recommend this wave excuse me this line of figures all three waves are worth having yes legolas is lacking quite a bit um the nazgul i'd say is also lacking but the rest excellent figures um if I had to rank them, I would go, ooh, that's tough. Um, honestly, Sauron number one. He's just too dang cool. I have never owned a Sauron figure. I've never seen one for a decent price or that looked this good. So definitely worth the money getting the whole set to build him. And you get six other great figures. Um, so yeah, my ranking would be Sauron number one. Aragorn number two, uh, Gimli number three, he just looks awesome, his accessories are great, the Moria orc would be four, Frodo would be fifth, the Nazgul sixth, and Legolas in last, that's seventh, 
that is the first three waves of the Lord of the Rings Diamond Select figures. Super excited for what's in store. We know that we have Gandalf and an Urukai soldier on the way. Hopefully sooner than later we'll get those. There's also a Gollum with a rock <laughs> and those accessories that I mentioned before. Got him on pre-order. So yeah, uh, let me know what you thought of the review. If there's anything you think I can do better, there's obviously quite a bit. Um, this is my first video again, so I'd appreciate any constructive criticism. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what figures you'd like to see in the line or what predictions you have. Uh, my prediction for the next wave after Gandalf wave is Arwen and Sam. That is my prediction. Hopefully these do well and keep doing well and we can get more of them. But thank you so much for watching. And again, if you feel so inclined, please like and subscribe and you'll be notified for future videos. Thanks again. And guys, just for fun, I've got Sauron next to the McFarlane Toys Armored Dark Side. Um, wow, <laughs> I thought he was a big figure, but Sauron is at least a foot taller without the spikes. <laughs> so Sauron is quite large. Um, and honestly, these two look pretty awesome together. I believe Weta designed Dark Side as well as Sauron, so that makes sense. Anyways. Fun little comparison and contrast here. Uh, thanks again, guys, for watching, and see you in the next video.